past 1 o'clock, so we can start. So the hearing of the Committee on Electoral Reforms and People's Participation is hereby called to order. This is actually a uh, continuation of the public hearing which was suspended last May 22, 2014. So may I call on the Committee Secretary, Attorney Joey Garcia, to acknowledge uh, the resource persons here present. Yeah. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, the committee would like to acknowledge the presence of our resource person in today's committee hearing. Uh, we have uh, Director Teopisto Elmas Jr., Election and Barangay Affairs Department of the COMELEC. We have Director uh, Attorney Joseph S. Vega, Legal Department, COMELEC. Attorney Albert Leonard Rodriguez, Legal Opinion and Research Division, COMELEC. Attorney Marjorie Martin, Deputy Director for Legal Partido Liberal. We have uh, Engineer Homer Bueno, Vice President for Luzon, PDP Laban. Mr. Ramon R. Casiple, Executive Director, Institute for Political and Electoral Reforms, IPER. We have uh, Attorney Abraham Alcantara, Legal Department, Gabriela Partilis. I'm, I'm sorry, uh, from ACT CIS party list. We have uh, Ms. Ligaya Santos Salomon, Political Part Affairs Officer 3, Gabriela party list. And Mr. Uh, Paul Nico Degolado, Legislative Staff, Bayan Muna party list. Senator. Welcome to all of you. And thank you for coming. So before we begin, uh, let me inquire from the COMELEC. In the last hearing, Director Elnas, I think you made some commitments to submit to this committee. Draft pr provisions on the definition or the grounds for determining a nuisance candidate. I and and, and then, Pangalawa, draft, draft provisions on declaring the following grounds as election offenses. Nuisance candidate who received consideration for running or one who ran for purposes of destroying the, the candidacy of, an, of another. Because I remember the idea came from you, so we requested if you could draft, no? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, unfortunately, the members of the team uh, last uh, hearing, uh, iba po yung kasama ko, and uh, they were tasked to uh, come up with the draft. I'll just follow it up. Uh, yet yeah. Any time of the day or tomorrow, Your Honor. Yes, uh, because... Uh, we, uh, we want you to know that we like your your suggestion, actually. So we're asking for a draft, but we will also come up with our, with our own draft. Okay, so tuloy pa po yun, ha? We, will, we will await the submission of the COMELEC. Nakuha niyo po yun? It's about the... the but there were two bills uh, to add grounds for nuisance candidates, candidates di ba? to declare. And then sabi niyo, may as well make that make those as election offenses. Uh, that's a good a good idea. Okay, for today, we have calendar uh, party list reform bills, which we will hear for the first time. And then we will hear for the second time the political party development bills, specifically uh, definition of political party, accreditation, turncoatism, the budget, uh, authorized expenses, limits, limits in voluntary contribution, and the state subsidy fund. And we will also hear for the second time uh, civil society organization bills. So we should start now uh, with the bills we will hear for the first time, the pa pa party list reform bills. Uh, <clears throat> these are, anong number yan? Ito na. Ito, ito na. So Senate bill, Senate bills numbers one four four nine and one four eighty two, And then there's another one, the to make sure that to make sure that nineteen oh four Senate bill nineteen oh four. So give. So can we can we open the another the floor for discussion? Uh, we also have uh, from the League of Provinces, uh, Miss Angelica Sanchez, the Policy Department. Honor, we do not interpose in the rights of Gabriela. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Um, with regards to the three bills already um, proposed by the Senate, 
Actually, Gabriela Women's Party is uh, co-author of a House bill filed by Bayan Muna Party List pending in the lower house, proposing amendments to the Party List System Act um, that's particularly uh, similar with the uh, proposed bill of um, Senator Ejercito. Our objectives in filing such a bill are um, one is to strengthen and ensure that the party list system is reserved exclusively for the marginalized and underrepresented sectors of society and to propose specific measures for a stricter compliance with the intent of the Constitution regarding genuine party list representation. Example are the eligibility requirements for the party list registration or accreditation and um, enumeration of specific qualifications of nominees. So that's similar with 1904, no? Uh, yes, yes, Your Honor. And with regards with um, the two other bills by Senator Santiago and Senator Estrada, um, we are still in the process of studying the possibility of filing a parallel bill uh, to increase the women's participation and representations in the party system as well as in other public offices. Okay. Uh, Question. Sabi mo, you mentioned that you already have co-authored the bill. Yes. So, can you compare it, can you compare it with 1909? Kasi yung halos yung title ninyo, almost the same. Yes. So, ano, may difference. <laughs> it's actually market. all of it. <laughs> Same. Oh, so, parang counterpart siya? Yes, okay. Your Honor. Okay, pati, so para siyang counterpart. Okay, Opa. so good. So, at the same time, umaandar na sa uh, both houses. Yes, Your Honor. So, uh, no changes in the House bill? Okay. Uh, no no proposed changes. But uh, we are still, uh, with regards to the women's uh, participation in public offices, yeah. we are still doing study of it. Mon, you have a uh, stand dito sa party list reform? Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> I'd like to comment on the uh, Bill 1904, uh, reserving the party system to marginalized and underrepresented uh, sectors. This basically uh, addresses the recent uh, Supreme Court decision that uh, uh, defined the party system as uh, uh, in compliance with the principle of proportional representation rather than uh, reserving uh, seats. So basically, from the point of view of the authors, I think they want to uh, reverse the Supreme Court uh, ruling. My, our opinion on this is uh, the following. One, the actual constitutional uh, basis for the patriarch system rests on the principle of proportional representation as is uh, the practice uh, globally. The question of reserve seats is a different system altogether which is not in our constitution. Uh, for example, in the New Zealand case, the uh, uh, minority peoples there have reserve seats. They have a separate constituency, separate list of voters. And uh, that is the most practical implementation of such a system. The problem with the uh, reserve seats here is that uh, our party list uh, representatives are elected at large. Mm -hmm. Meaning, even if you're a representative of the women sector, uh, men also uh, vote for you. Uh, again, if you're a representative of the farmer sector, even non-farmers will have to vote for you. Uh, well, this is a strange system in the Supreme Court precisely to address sending the party list uh, law actually is to make it in line with the Supreme Court uh, uh, marginalized and unrepresented sectors so that the uh, organization that in making it exclusive uh, is not only impossible under the present system where everybody votes for everybody else but uh, it actually, I think, uh, limits the uh, actual uh, options that uh, voters have. Uh, if you want a reserve seat, you have to change the constitution itself, I think. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you for, for that input, no? uh, Mon Casiple. Attorney Rodriguez. 
Yes, sir. Um, since we are now discussing Senate Bill 1904, on the part of the Commission, Your Honor, uh, I agree, well, on a personal note, uh, I agree with uh, Mr. Casiple here that the party list system was drafted not mainly for purposes of representing the marginalized and underrepresented sectors, but uh, for popular representation, wherein, uh, as can be seen in the deliberation of the Constitutional Commission, um, I think it was uh, Commissioner Tadeo who, who once pointed that what about major political party lists and the decision of the Commission was that they will not be allowed to participate for certain time only. And this has been upheld by the Supreme Court in the recent case of Atong Paglaom, Your Honor. Now, going back to the term marginalized and under... Ito pala interpretation ng case. Major political parties were disqualified from the first party list elections, but sooner or later, papayagan sila. Reading from the deliberations of the framers of the Constitution, Your Honor, the members of the Constitutional Commission then asking whether Um, major political parties then, UNIDO, LABAN, uh, can participate. The members uh, deliberated that since such ma um, major political parties have the machinery, uh, it will be detrimental to, sm uh, to smaller political parties. So that's why uh, in their deliberation, I, if I'm not mistaken, Your Honor, they stated there that Uh, major political parties will be barred from a certain period only. I, I cannot recall the, the exact uh, period, Your Honor. Uh, this was the basis of the decision in Ang Bagong Bayani down to Banat versus Comelec. And then in Atong Paglaong case, uh, this was clarified again, and um, the Supreme Court stated that the ban for major, major political parties Uh, has already been lifted, so therefore they can participate subject to certain conditions, Your Honor, as enumerated in Atong Paglaum. Now, going back to my point, Your Honor, um, when it comes to uh, marginalized and underrepresented sectors, the decision of the Supreme Court, uh, they did not actually uh, define that particular term. What do you mean by underrepresented and marginalized sector? In Atong Paglaum, they said, they clarified it into those under economic aspect, etc., but Since um, the Congress now and the Senate, uh, well, the Congress in general, the, they want to amend the, this particular law, Your Honor, it is the position of the Commission that the term marginalized under, an, and underrepresented sector be defined or be the definition thereof be included in the law so as to prevent what happened in the past wherein the power, quote-unquote, um, was vested in the, well, the, the Commission exercised pursuant to existing law and jurisprudence to define marginalized and underrepresented sectors, which led to numerous cases filed before the Supreme Court, Your Honor. And uh, another thing, Your Honor, in 1904, um, there is a provision here that seeks to, uh, in Section 9, Section 5 of the proposed bill, Your Honor, particular section 9 of, uh, I mean, seeking to amend section 9 of RA 7949, A 7941 rather, uh, by clarifying who can be nominated. Uh, it enumerated until letter E, Your Honor. Uh, the Commission, Your Honor, um, while we do not uh, directly object to the proposal, uh, we have some reservations, Your Honor, because um, it may seem that it will restrict the right to run for public office should uh, the, this particular provision be enacted into law because as you can see, Your Honor, in Section 9.1 of the proposed bill, it states here that all nominees, including those, the youth sector shall not be, shall not be qualified to become a party list nominee if he or she is a person, A, who was elected and served office at any time, etc., Your Honor. So, Uh, we are of the opinion that this might restrict the right of the people to run uh, or to seek for public office, Your Honor. By yourself, uh, run and seek public office, you, you are not supposed to use the back. In letter C, anyone who has been... And then, Your Honor, Section 15... Uh, Decision of the appropriate uh, a decision of the body composing the 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 party list group, Your Honor. Uh, we have some reservation here, Your Honor, because um, learning from what happened in the coalition of associations of senior citizens, wherein an issue is as to who will remain as representative in Congress due to the quote uh, resignation of one of its nominee, 
uh, this proposal will address such issue, although it is um, then it needs to be elaborated or clarified, Your Honor, so as to prevent any circumvention of this particular uh, provision should it be enacted into law. Uh, Director Elnas? Uh, in addition to that, Your Honor, uh, at present we have the law on recall, which covers only yeah, which covers only uh, local can, local public officials, and in this case, uh, I, I believe that once a member of uh, a party list a party list representative qualifies and in fact assumes office as representative or member of the house, then the qualifications etc shall be subject only to. Uh, ito quaranto na sana ito ang ano by what authority or it will not be subject to recall or upon which the organization will look into. And another point, Your Honor, is under uh, the same bill, um, it would be better if COMELEC, as far as operational aspect is concerned, be given the prerogative to set the timelines as far as the filing of uh, the petition for accredita accreditation and the the acceptance or the uh, reception of uh, nominees, Your Honor, so that COMELEC uh, will have this flexibility, Your Honor. Let me, let me acknowledge the presence of Attorney Melchor Monsod, the Buhay Party List. Welcome, sir. Uh, but, Director Elnas, I, I think the if we give the power to the Party List organization to recall their nominees, that also emphasizes the the point that the seat belongs to the party list, not to the person. So, kaya ng ngayon, ang question ko, uh, yeah, diba, there, there are registered party lists, di ba, in, in, the, in the COMELEC, and uh, they have articles of, uh, ang tawag natin doon, incorporation or bylaws, di ba? You should have, uh, did you require them to make, uh, to specifically make it clear in their articles and bylaws who are, what is the body, the supreme governing body of the party list which makes the supreme decisions within the party list. Tapat po ganun kasi yun ang yung recall nung ano if if they kick out if they kick out as member their current uh, congressman therefore that congressman loses the seat because he is only congressman because of by virtue of membership in the party list. Actually, gusto ko to, ha, ang provision na to because that highlights niya. But dapat, it should be a requirement by the COMELEC like when you register as a party list, claro yung structure. Kasi you will, in case of dispute, you will be, parang corporate dispute dati, takbo ta SEC, di ba? Ngayon, ganito dispute, takbo sa COMELEC. Like, kayo ang magde-decide. How come what happened sa senior citizens? How come you were not able, you, you came up with a Solomonic decision na hinati nyo pa? Bakit, why can you not decide on the basis of the papers nila? Who are? Ititrace back nyo lang yun eh. What, nung, nung nag-register, ganito ang situation, and then e, e, so, paper trail, sunod-sunod, and then what happened? Sino may nang may authority? Uh, actually, Your Honor, is the decision of the bank and it's beyond our... Uh, so, kaya, ma, ganun, there, there was a controversy. You resolved the controversy on the basis of the structure uh, as reflected on the paper submitted to you. Well, Nangyayari, Solomonic decision, hati. I mean, anyway, uh, sub, I don't know, subject to compromise bang uh, who gets to sit, uh, to, to, to sit in the, in, the, ano, in the party list. Well, anyway, uh, any, any, uh, uh, we welcome also Ms. Ms. Eric Alvia of uh, Namfrel as resource person. Any other co comments po on? Uh, pero pero uh, in the opinion of the COMELEC and the resource persons, if we enact such a law, that we limit the party list system to underrepresented and marginalized. It will be constitutional. Tinignan ko yung party list sa provision sa ano eh, sa sa constitution. Hindi naman yat, hindi naman in-emphasize na underrepresented and marginalized eh. Hindi. Ah, sige. Attorney Monson. Yes, Your Honor. I don't... I, I think we should go back to concepts. Uh, under our system, we have two types of representation in the lower house, the district representation and the party list representation. Uh, of course, the intention was to give opportunity for 
as many sectors to be represented, not only the districts. The marginalized definitely was given this opportunity as well. But there are certain advocacies that uh, uh, maybe a political advocacy or a social advocacy that has difficulty in getting in. But uh, with the party list system, these advocacies are now represented. In our case, Buhay, we have specific advocacy. We have very clear advocacy. And therefore, when we presented our application way back at the beginning of the party list system, we emphasized that we are coming in because of those advocacies. And this was approved by the COMELEC because of that, not because we are limited to marginalized. We have marginalized members, definitely. We also have members who are, shall we say, uh, uh, at the middle and even upper strata of uh, the social structure. But our, our uh, representation in Congress and in the COMELEC is that we are, uh, we are there because of uh, our advocacies. And I don't think uh, the, the misinterpretation, I think, of the general public is that party list is limited to the marginalized. So every time there is a debate, uh, the, the focus is marginalized. I don't think that was the concept here and abroad and anywhere, even in Europe. The party list was not limited to the marginalized. Although we, the Buhay Party, represent the marginalized as well as our advocacy. That's why, uh, you know, Attorney Rodriguez, you were about to say something. By reading the constitutional provisions on party list, do we see there that this is meant to be limited to the ma underrepresented and marginalized? Well, Your Honor, the Constitution states that uh, it shall be represent uh, the the House of Representatives shall be composed of etc. etc. And then the party list represents of course, it should twenty percent too. And then nakalagay po rito is that um, shall be filled as provided by law by selection or election from the labor, peasant, urban, urban poor rather, uh, indigenous cultural communities, women, youth, and such other sectors as may be provided by law except the religious sector. Um, what I was um, talking a while ago, Your Honor, is that doon po sa deliberations ng uh, Constitutional Commission, um, nailabas na rin po nila yan kung ano po ba talaga ang pwedeng i-represent ng, ng party list. I think there was uh, a, uh, nagkaroon po sila ng consensus, may, may dalawang grupo na gusto is purely for purely for marginalized and underrepresented sector lang at yung isa will be open. Parang yung sinabi po ni Sir Mon Kasiple kanina based sa European system na proportional representation and natalo po, if I'm not mistaken, 22, 17 po yata yung boto, nanalo po yung proportional representation. Yes po. Kaya po lumabas po dyan yung tanong, katol po sinabi ko kanina, that pwede bang mag-participate ang major political parties, etc., etc. Ang sinabi po nila doon, pag major political party ka, you will be barred from from participating within a certain period. Pero pag maliliit na political parties, then that is the time para mapalakas mong iyong political party. Then they, you will be allowed to participate. Kaya nga po ang, yung iba pong uh, members ng ng kongreso ngayon, bayan muna, akbayan, hindi naman po sila talaga nagparehistro as marginalized and underrepresented sector during the, the first time, but they are registered as political parties po, although hindi lang po sila categorized as major political parties. Question is, if we enact such a law, which will, we will limit now the party list to underrepresented and marginalized, will this be open to a constitutional challenge? Kasi Bromley, uh, Attorney Martin of the LP. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chair. I think, Ms., uh, Mr. Chair, there will be um, an, a forum for questions because as we see, 
Actually, Your Honor, the latter portion of the first paragraph of the this provision says that um, shall be elected through a party system of region, registered national, regional, and sectoral parties or organizations. So when we say regional, for example, organizations, we don't say that, for example, the region, region 2, region 2, everyone's marginalized. So how can we have regional organizations if, for example, um, um, it's only marginalized people that we are accepting into the party list group. So I think, Your Honor, it's gonna be um, there's, it's gonna be open for question because in that case we're already limiting um, the concept of proportional representation that is actually required and uh, provided for in the constitution. Uh, Engineer Bueno of PDP Laban. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chairman. Uh, for the party, uh, our concern is just uh, about. Uh, the proper representation of this marginalized and underprivileged uh, sector, underrepresented sector. Since uh, we're trying to limit their representations in terms of uh, uh, after two de political defeats, two successive elections, they're automatically disqualified. Since ito na marginalized na sila, underrepresented na, then again, the third time to to join the exercise hindi na sila pwede now what is that what is the purpose is there wisdom on it so uh, we propose that uh, let us see if there should uh, a possible be a possible modification of it hindi mo pwedeng dapat i-disqualify na kasi bibigyan mo pa siya ng mas uh, magandang uh, karapatan to 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 try baka sakaling may represent pa rin nila yung sector na yon so mr chairman uh, it's just a concern and probably this could be a, a, a to, to look into the modification of this uh, uh, good good point especially if the number of votes uh, is rising no is increasing uh, may not say the advocacy or the group is now gaining uh, support or traction not enough lang for a seat pwede a good, good point. Uh, any other comments, uh, Attorney Rodriguez? Yes, Your Honor. In addition lang po dun sa sinabi na Attorney Martin, there might be a problem, Your Honor, dito sa, sa constitutional provision because sa first paragraph po, particularly dun sa last sentence po, if I'm not mistaken, uh, shall be elected through a party list system of registered national, regional, and sectoral parties or organizations. So, if the Congress will enact a law limiting uh, the party list system to the underrepresented and marginalized sector, then there might be a problem, Your Honor, with this particular provision of the Constitution. This is the latest Supreme Court case on the party list. Ito bang atong paglaom na minention mo? Yes, Your Honor, oh. atong paglaom po. And sa atong oh, paglaom... Hindi ba niya sinabi din doon na uh, sa underrepresented ito? Uh, Your Honor, sa atong paglaom po, meron po siyang anim na... na naglagay po siya guideline unlike doon sa ba, um, bagong bayani na walo. Ang nandito po sa atong paglaom, Your Honor, is that uh, if I may be allowed to read Your Honor. Pero syempre, the Supreme Court was interpreting the existing law, di ba? Yes, Your uh, Honor. So taking it, basta yun ang, yun ang ano natin dyan, yun ang ating caution dyan, ano? Oh, sige, can you be the six, ano? Yes, Your Honor. The new parameters for party list to be followed by the Commission under the atong paglaom, number one, Three different groups may participate in the party list system. Number one, national parties or organizations. Two, regional parties or organizations. And three, sectoral parties or organizations. That's the first, Your Honor, parameter. The second is, national parties or organizations and regional parties or organizations do not need to organize along sectoral lines and do not need to represent any marginalized and underrepresented sector. The third parameter, Your Honor, is, Political parties can participate in party list elections provided they register under the party list system and do not field candidates in legislative district elections. A political party, whether major or not, that fields candidates in legislative district elections can participate in party list elections only through its sectoral wing that can separately register under the party list system. The sectoral wing is by itself an independent sectoral party and is linked to a political party through a coalition. The fourth parameter, Your Honor, is sectoral parties or organizations may either be marginalized and underrepresented or lacking in well-defined political constituencies. It is enough that their principal advocacy pertains to the special interests and concerns of their sector. 
The sectors that are marginalized and underrepresented include labor, peasant, fisher folk, urban poor, indigenous cultural communities, handicapped veterans, and overseas uh, workers. The sectors that lack well-defined political constituencies include professionals, the elderly, women, and the youth. The fifth parameter po ay a majority of the members of sectoral parties or organizations that represent the marginalized and underrepresented must belong to the marginalized and underrepresented sector they represent. Similarly, a majority of the members of sectoral parties or organizations that lack well-defined political constituencies must belong to the sector they represent. The nominees of sectoral parties or organizations that represent the marginalized and underrepresented or that represent those who lack well-defined politi political constituencies either must belong to their respective sector or, or must have a track record of advocacy for the organization. The nominee of national and regional parties or organizations must be bona fide members of such parties or organizations. And the last parameter, Your Honor, is national, regional, and sectoral parties or organizations shall not be disqualified if some of their nominees are disqualified, provided that they have at least one nominee who remains qualified. So, yun po yung anin na parameters na po ng atong paglaong. Pahani, bakit ganun? Uh, even if the all the nominees should be disqualified, then they, they should be allowed to resubmit a list. Di ba? Well, Your Honor, nakalagay lang po rito, even if some of their nominees are disqualified, provided that meron pa po silang Kaya, isa na qualified. Hindi ko maintindihan yung, yung proviso. Even, even if all are disqualified, then Comelec should just ask the... Kasi you won eh. Part, part list, you won a, a seat. So, Comelec should just ask the party list to submit qualified uh, nominees. Yes, Your Honor, because this is uh, in answer to um, Comelec Resolution 8807 and 9366, Your Honor, wherein uh, nagkaroon po ng, ng striktong pag ng striktong pag-implement ng mga resolutions na yun sa pagsala, ika nga, ng mga part list. Not only the party list groups, but also the party list nominees. Kasi po, doon sa Comelec na resolution 9366 that pertains to registration of political parties. Yung 8807 po ay doon sa nominees naman. So medyo dalawa po yung nangyari doon. And if I'm not mistaken, Your Honor, if the group, this particular group uh, submitted their no list of nominees at meron doon, na sa tingin po ng komisyon ay hindi kasama sa sector na yun, dinidisqualify po niya for untruthful uh, petition or untruthful statement sa kanyang petition. So, eto po siguro ang naging wisdom kung bakit nagkaroon ng ganitong pronouncement ang ang Supreme Court sa atong paglaong. Basta, uh, pagdating sa party list, majority must belong to the to the sector or must uh, advocate, no? The, the advocacy. Yes, sir. So, the COMELEC is now in the process of uh, modifying or amending party list rules and uh, regulations ba ba? To, to comply with the atong paglaom? Ganun na ba ang nangyayari? Sir, Your Honor, wala pa po. As of now, Your Honor, wala pa po. Your Honor. But uh, the, 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 with the recent decision, Your Honor, in atong paglaom, then definitely the Commission will, will uh, revise or amend the current uh, resolution, Your Honor, when it comes to party list. Ah, so, meaning to say, uh, if you re you will really follow now the Atong Paglaong six uh, parameters, you will now be allowing uh, major mainstream political parties to participate in the party list for as long as hindi mag-field ng district, right? Ma? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, so you heard that? Pa-partilist? Ah, uh, Tony Martin? Actually, Your Honor, uh, major political parties are not allowed... Uh, are, 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 ano, are not allowed to field sector representatives on their own. They can have um, sectoral parties independent who are linked to them. So, um, ang, what, what the ruling is saying, Your Honor, is that, um, for example, there's a political party, it, it differentiates the difference between, no, it says the difference between a district representative and a sectoral representative. It just says that, for example, the party fields a candidate in that region, it can no longer join the sectoral representation. But, but a, uh, conceivably, we can have a political party na dedicated siya sa party list. Sabi niya, I, we will not fill district uh, candidates, but party list kami. Pwede yun, di ba? But if, if the political party will fill district candidates, sabi, mag-sectoral, you'll have a sectoral arm which will be part of your party through a coalition agreement. Allowed yun. Okay, that's in the, in the parameters. 
So yeah, that is our status now. So what will we, what will we do? Ito, ito na nga yung party list reform. Uh, are you happy, uh, Mr. Degolado, with the if if this will be implemented? Uh, Mr. Chair, actually, yung mga inputs naman po ng COMELEC and from the other uh, groups, uh, medyo okay naman po siya in a sense na yung idea of popular representation, dun sa idea ng popular representation, pero we have to take note of the reality na yung party list system is being used uh, as a gateway for uh, major political parties or even yung mga uh, pagpalagay natin yung mga uh, may, may links sa mga major parties, major political families, nakapasok sila sa uh, par sa Congress through party list system. At sa ganung situation po ngayon, di na, we cannot deny that na mas marami pa rin yung mga nanggagaling sa mga uh, major parties and families na nakaupo sa Congress na instead na yung uh, allotted representation for uh, the marginalized and underrepresented underrepresent sectors ay uh, makuha nung deserve talagang makaupo dun. Pero nangyayari nga po yun na mas lalong nagiging marginalized pa yung marginalized dahil yung opportunity for them to participate in the mainstream uh, elections is yun nga with the recent pronouncements of the Supreme Court in its decisions uh, nawawala po yung essence niya pero kung in terms of popular representation we are all for uh, popular and uh, uh, sectoral representation po basta ako ang opinion ko with, if, if there is a new law if there's a change in the law of course definitely that we can also have a change in the interpretation kasi in interpret lang naman Supreme Court yung law but pero bumalik ako sa dati kong question if the attack will be not only on interpretation, but the attack will be on the constitutionality of the law. So, anyway, policy decision yan. If Congress is willing to to take that risk, no? ah, gawin natin yan. Ah, may, Engineer Bueno? Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, relevant to the last statement, uh, so, the party, the PDP Laban, where the, the Honorable Chairman belongs, modesty aside, um, speaking of the, the, the true representation of a party list nominee, then uh, we, we would propose the disqualification of a nominee of any party list organization who is re related to an incumbent governor or member of Congress within the fourth civil consanguinity or by affinity or related with economic, economically entrenched political clan. Uh, yung uh, sinasabi kasi kanina, kung maaari nga ilimit kasi yung mga malalaking uh, uh, clans sa isang lugar, sa isang probinsya, at papatakbuhin yung relative your anak, and of course, halimbawa, one million registered voters yung lugar na yon, automatic, they can uh, win a seat, a particular seat in Congress. So, kung kinakailangan, meron pag-isipan din natin ito na baka pwedeng i-disqualify ka agad mga yon. Sa current law, wala. No? Current law, wala. Okay. So, uh, noted. Uh, sige, uh, Mr. Degulado first. Then, uh, Mr. Attorney Chair, uh, dun po sa bill namin, we have a proposal to uh, to restrict the, or yun nga, with the input of uh, the, with the uh, gentleman from PDP Laban, meron na po dun sa proposed, proposed bill namin, which is basically the same with uh, uh, Senate Bill uh, 1409, na pinagbabawal yung uh, related by affinity or consanguinity up to the third degree to any incumbent officials referred to in paragraph A above, which is a uh, vice, uh, vice mayor, mayor, vice governor, governor, district representative, senator, vice president, and president. So, yun po, uh, yung sa, kung sa kanila po, a fourth, uh, up to fourth uh, degree of consanguinity or affinity sa amin po is limited po to third. So, which, nag-contemplate naman po yung uh, dun sa situation na pinipresent nung from PDP Laban. Overlapping yung concept sa anti-political dynasty natin, ha? so which we which we which we could the concept which we could accommodate in that bill, oh, so dalawa possible nyang pwede siyang ma-accommodate sa two possible uh, laws, no? Ah, Attorney Manson? Po sa yung yung po sa nang observing, parang pinag-usapan lang natin yung uh, dynasty 
dynasty build. Siguro gan- ga- y- do- doon na lang. Uh, may two chances bali yung proposal na yun. Oh. It could appear in that bill, it could appear in this bill. Uh, oh. Okay, so good. Attorney Martin. Sir, just for the record, um, this bill, nine, I think there's an inconsistency in the bill itself, 1904, as to the qualification of um, nominees. Um, section 4, the last paragraph of Section 4 states that no person occupying an appointed or elective post shall be included in the list unless he or she encloses therein his letter of resignation to that office and the due acceptance or approval thereof. But, Your Honor, if you see Section 9, the, uh, 9A, 9.1a, it says that um, nominees who was elect, uh, a nominee was elected and served office at any time as vice mayor, mayor, or vice governor, Dan, shall not be qualified. So, in the, in the first provision that I read, there was a proviso saying that um, an elective, someone who occupied an elective post shall be a nominee. If, um, basta meron um, letter of resignation, it was accepted. But in the other, ano, Sa other provision po, it was qualified na siya from the start. So, for the record lang po. Right, right. That's, uh, yeah, we have to clarify that, no? Kasi nakahawak, naka-occupy siya. Good. Okay, so any other comments on 1904? Okay na? But how about doon sa isa, yung gender equality, equality yung equalization of the gender? So, I, I think, a- ako, a- a- I came to realize that the party list would be the best vehicle to to yeah to improve the uh, female g- uh, gender or sex representation in the house of representatives especially if we find a way formula to equalize the number of nomin uh, the number of congressmen that comelec will proclaim equalize na niya sa party list system pa rin pa lang sa, sa level pa lang ng party list system equalize na niya so for example now ilan ang mga party list nominees 50 Six, fifty, fifty, fifty-five. Fifty-five seats available. Oh, kunyari, sa within the system itself, twenty-eight, twenty-seven, at as close as possible. Oh, for example, i-apply natin. Fifty-five na po ang proclaimed na, hindi pa. Fifty-five na ba proclaimed? Oh, ilan ang babae, ilan ang lalaki sa fifty-five? Uh, let us say, oh, so I'm, I'm sure hindi yan siya as close as twenty-eight, twenty-seven. Oh, but is it possible if we, if this committee will uh, pursue the idea nito two bills, but hindi lang ako sa nominee titingin, but sa proclamation of the uh, uh, representatives that you will allow to to sit in the party list, Comelec will try to equalize, kasi under the under the concept that it is the party list organization which win, which won the seat, not the person. I, uh, Director Elna. Ma- mayroon lang akong comment dito, sir, no? Uh, this might be violative dito sa, ano, sa equal protection of the law. Uh, this might be discriminatory on the part of other marginalized or underrepresented sectors like PWDs, senior citizens. What about these sectors? Yeah, oh. The idea is, sa PWD, we will force them to submit equal number of male and female nominees. Sa senior citizens, the law will force them to submit equal number of male and female nominees. And then, when the COMELEC determines the number of seats won, uh, the number of seats for the party list, when you proclaim the actual uh, uh, nominees, you will as much as possible equalize. Na ang ending nito, as much as possible, same number of men and same number of women will be congressmen under the party list system. But they will be representing their party list. So only the only the only the sectoral party for women will be allowed na exclusively women. Perfect proclamation na nung male and female that will be taken into account, di ba? I, I don't know, Attorney Rodrigo. Uh, I fully agree with you, Your Honor. But baka magkaroon po tayo ng problema. Unang una po under the current law. Although Your Honor, I've been reading the. Pre- the proposals po ni Senator Estrada and ni Senator uh, Miriam. Pupunta po ako doon mamaya. Yung pagbalanse po ng mga ma- uupong representante sa Kamara, pa- madali lang po, Your Honor, kung ang pagbabasehan natin ay yung grupong nanalo. Ang problema po kasi, Your Honor, under the current uh, system, you have to compute kung ilan yung nakuha nilang boto. 
So even if, let's say out of the 50 na lang po, para mas madali i-compute, meron po tayong 25 na meron mga nominees na babae. Yung 25, meron nominees sa puro lalaki or whatsoever po. Ang problema po natin yung pag-distribute po ng seats. Kasi ang nakalagay po sa batas, i-compute mo siya under the first system, which is the kung sino nakapon ng 2%, etc., etc. Et po. So, paano po, Your Honor, kapag yung mga nasa bandang likuran, ang, num ang number one nominee nila ay lalaki? Hindi naman po pwede i-proclaim natin yung second nominee na babae. So, hindi medyo may hirapan hindi, po tayong ibalansin. Ang, ang naisip ko nga, we will, uh, we will, we will require each party list to, to submit two lists, male and female list, para may number one nominee. Hindi po kaya magka-problema so, yan, Your Honor? It, 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 ano, you, you choose, if you need the female, if you need to proclaim now a female, then you, you now choose from the female list of the party list. Ang, ang, ang Gabriela lang ang mga women sector, ang wala kayong male uh, list, female, female lang. Oh. So if you get two seats, the two zero na kaagad. The Comelec will now equalize sa male, you will have to proclaim two male, parang gano'n. So I don't know if this will be too tedious or ano, but this is our, this is our best chance because ang party list... Uh, By law, we can we can design it in such a way that you will equalize the number of male and female congressmen, which will be proclaimed under the party list. Pursuing the ano ha, pursuing the ideas ng dalawang ng dalawang bills ha. Actually, Your Honor, maganda po yung ideas ng dalawang bill. Although may problema lam po, kasi nakalagay po rito sa parehong bill. Ah, dinagay po lang niya dapat fifty percent women. Kaya lang po hindi po niya. Yes po, pero kung titignan nyo po sa final five, eh usually po, aminin na po natin na makakuha po ng two seats, medyo mahirap. So ang gagawin, pwede pong gawin nila, yung first three nila, lalaki, then the rest, babae. Basically, hindi rin po makakupo yung babaeng nominee. Kaya nga, if, yeah, but mag, it's, it's a step in the right direction eh. So kung ipurso natin, there is ano eh, kaya eh. With using our imagination, we can do it eh. Kasi, One list lang inisip nyo kasi, one to five. Di two list, o tagda dalawa. Dalawang lalaki, dalawang babae. Then the Comelec will have the, the Comelec will, will now balance male, female pro sa proclamation. If you choose the number one female nominee, ba't sila magagalit? <laughs> nominee nila yun eh. <laughs> Because the seat belongs to the party list, not to the person. I don't know, uh, uh, Director Elas, uh, uh, ipurso ang, natin to. Ang problema dito, Your Honor, no? once manalo na yung party list, Within the ano, nagagawan na yan. Within within the organization itself, no. Ile to yung problema. That's the reality. That's why kita klaro nga natin yun na the structure in in your papers, in your registration papers, klaro yung structure. In case of disputes, klaro yung sino yung magdecide. And then pag dini dispute pa rin yung authority na magdecide, Comelec decides. Ang ang ano lang ng Comelec is yung nagdecide ba has the power or not. Then, siyempre, yung decision ng authorized entity will be the decision honored by the COMELEC. So, we can do this, I think. Eh. Tapos, medyo mali yun eh. Kasi kung nag-aaway yung dalawang nominee, ibig sabihin nun, hindi sila, <laughs> hindi sila genuine na, <laughs> hindi sila genuine na sectoral organization. Wala silang advocacy pala. Pinag-aawayan lang pala nila seat. So, I, uh, Attorney Vega. With the experience of Comelec, Your Honor, ganun po kahit clear na may first, second, third eh. Away pa rin po sila sa seat. So, talagang... That's why, kaya nga tayo napapwersa, there's a party list reform bills nga eh. Reform nga ito eh. Nakita natin yung weakness eh. Nag-aaway, ano na. Attorney Martin. Sir, I think, sir, this one is good. But when it comes to the nominees, kasi as the... Amendment provides the final ranking of the five representatives be done by drawing lots. Ibig sabihin po, dun sa lima, dalawang babae, tatlong lalaki, magdodraw lots. And then the ranking will be based from that one. So, let's say one yung lalaki na puro pangalawa. Parang, I think, sir, it's already, um, it's already, in, in that sense, we're already playing fair to both genders. Kasi, um, equal opportunity. Kung sino naman yung number one na nabunot lalaki, pangalawa, babae. So, wala pong discretion na nag-play doon. So, and when it comes to the proclamation naman po, sir, I think we should follow na rin probably the ranking that was already submitted. Kasi baka it will cause more um, trouble or mas hindi din practical for Comelec to do it eventually. So, It would be good, probably, sir, if we start sa nominee. Tapos yun nga, pag I think with the drawing of lots when it comes to the five ranking, 
okay na rin siya because as a woman din, I think it's already an opportunity for us to be a nominee and kung sino, kumbaga parang no discretion at all na po siya. So, malas na lang po kung ang bumunot, ang nabunot, baga lalaki talaga nun, eh, pangalaw lalaki pa rin eh, kulang po tayo ng dasal, parang ganun na lang. Lock na. Eh, sa ato ni Mansod. Uh, you're all right. I think we will be treading on dangerous grounds when we legislate on the basis of gender. Ano bang pinag-uusapan natin? At po kasi, hindi ba yan ang pinaka-importante? Ideology, hindi ba yan importante? My next question ko, kunyari, for example, for example, we will require party lists to submit two, two, two lists, male, female, tagdadalawa. Baka kulang. Can, 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 buhay, can buhay submit uh, at least two female na uh, advocates? Kung ganyan, baka kulang. Male, female, and the other one. De, ah. Dalawa lang, the two sexes. Uh, I will not, actually, we, we better use the word sex, not gender. Kasi baka nga in the future, yung gender eh, mag-increase to more than two. So, two, so the, the, the two sexes. Kunyari, actually, tatanoy ko rin sa ambayan muna. Eh. If, you were, if the law will require you to submit, can you submit also two female nominees? Kaya nyo gawin yun, di ba? Kaya kaya namin oh, kaya nyo rin kaya ho namin marami kami membro meron kami Tama pa meron baka ayaw ng mga membro magsabihin ang gusto namin halimbawa ang gusto namin itong mga limang nominee ito na puro babae o ang gusto namin itong mga nominee ito na puro lalaki ang sinasabi ko lang po let us uh, say away from uh, gender discrimination eh, paano kami mga lalaki kami ang sa ako ha, personally, hindi ito party. At tingin ko, ang api dito sa ating komunidad ang lalaki. And I'm speaking for personal. But anyway, uh, say, uh, pag, if we require the two lists naman na tag dalawang lalaki, dalawang babae, I don't think ma, ma, uh, i, ma ano tayo sa bias doon. No? Pero in, in other countries, as pointed out by my staff, may yung zipper, may zipper, zipper yung term, di ba? zipper na alternating, uh, Ganon din po yun. Pero, pero pinipwersa rin ito ni Monsod sa ibang bansa. Pinipwersa nila. Male, pag male si number one, number two si female, number three si male, number four si female. Ganon. E, e di so, po sa district representation ganon rin dahil para gusto natin yung timbang ng... Hindi sir, hindi nga. Kaya nga precisely, hindi nga in a, in a, in a democratically, uh, in a popular vote, uh, yung mga district, ano, let, let the people decide po yun. That's why the party list is the vehicle to try to as much as possible equalize. Let the, let the female uh, sector catch up in positions of, uh, in elective positions. Gagamitin sana natin yung party list. Ito, I think yung, yung dalawang bills, ganun din naman yung ano niya, eh, ganun din yung kanyang uh, objective, except that dinaan lang niya sa equalize first, as much as possible equalize in the nominees. Oh. But if we carry carry it out, why 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 are we why are we fixated so one list? We can, why can we not come up with two lists? Kaya niyo except ang except ang women sector hindi yung kaya yun. And anyway, so it's just an idea, no? But I'm sure buhay parties can comply if you you if you ask two lists, oh two lists, male and female, ng adv advocates niyo, champions niyo. I think you can comply. If there is a law that requires us, yes, sir, that I know. we can uh, physically and uh, numerically have the capability to submit uh, as many lists as would be required. Okay, yes, sir. Okay, yes, sir. And, and then if the, if, the, if the number one female nominee should be proclaimed as congressman, tanggap din ninyo yun. You, okay po sa inyo kasi number one female nominee. Tama po ba? Pero sa amin po, parang ngayon natin yung magkaroon tayo ng gender bias, parang ganyan. Bakit yung mga kababaihan nagre-reklamo? E di mga kalalakihan din magre-reklamo. As a matter of fact, yung mga kapatid natin na hindi kababaihan at hindi kalalakihan, nagre-reklamo na ngayon. E bakit? Huwag natin pasukan. Kasi, well, affirmative action yan because ito nga, ina-apply ko sana nga sa current, wala lang data sila, Director Elnas eh. Sa 55 na nakaupo na party list, ilan ang lalaki, ilan ang babae. So, makita natin na lamang ang, oh, kahit hindi tayo tumingin sa official documents, lamang ang lalaki. So, ganun po yung attorney Monsod. That I don't think it will be, I don't think it will be unconstitutional. If there are two equal lists, male and female, three names each, two names each, so what's, what's so unconstitutional about the requirement? Sir, sir. Yes, sir. Sa constitution, wala naman she and he. We, we the people. Hindi, hindi, and when we say he, it means both, hindi naman for she and he. In other words, hindi natin sinasabi. Uh, 
ang baba, uh, babae, lalaki, we, the people, irrespective of what your gender is. And the, uh, I have all the respect for women. I definitely like women. But, uh, <laughs> but, but uh, wag tayo mag-registrate ng kwan, based on gender dahil kulang ang representation nila. Dadating ang panahon. Dadating ang panahon, mas dadami sila. Dahil mas marami ang babaeng mambubo, mambuboto. Kung maganda ang kanilang advokasya, mas marami ang uupo. Pero historically, nag-i-evolve tayo. Nung araw, hindi nga sila pwede bumoto. Eh. Ngayon, nakakaboto na sila. It takes time for, for them. At saka nung araw, ang konsepto natin sa babae, ang trabaho nila, yung pinakamahirap na trabaho, which is homemaking. Eh ngayon, gusto na nilang pumasok doon sa mag-welding, mag-kuan, lahat. Hindi, sige, kung gusto nila yun, hindi eh, okay. Pero, pag mag-legislate tayo on the basis of gender, palagay ko, delikado yan. Boss, kaming mga kalalakihan na naaapi ngayon, eh, eh o, papano na yan ngayon? At At Tony Monson, ang buhay party list, meron ba kayo official uh, position sa Senate Bill... Senate Bills Numbers 1449 and 1482. Na ganyan din po yung hangarin actually. It's uh, to, a, to, a, to a lesser degree lang po. Doon sa nomi sa, actually, yung two bills na yon minamandate na nila na more women in the list of nominees. Do you, are, are you against the two bills? Okay po, particular namin yung advocacy. Dahil babae o lalaki, kailangan, very strict kami doon sa pro-life uh, posturing mo. Yan. Wa wow. Regardless of uh, male or female. Wala po, okay, Juan, wala po kaming gender Tama. bias. Advocacy ang... Just as I suspected. Okay. Kaya acceptable, acceptable nga sa inyo na ganito. Opa. Opa. Acceptable naman sa lahat, actually. <laughs> Ayas, yes, uh, sinong gusto? Uh, Mon, si Mon muna, din Attorney Marty. Uh, thank you, Mr. Che. Actually, I would like to insert the idea of opportunity. The Constitution guarantees the equal opportunity and uh, human rights, of course, will they need. But opportunity is different from mandatory. Kung ang usapin po sa tingin ko ay obliga obligahin mo na maglagay ng, uh, hindi nominee, eh? I think nominee is opportunity. Pero yung paupuin mo, kahit na hindi siya number one, that's already, I think, discrimination. In the sense that, kung may number one yung party list, whether lalaki, babae. Dapat yun yung pumasok eh. Kasi napili siya. May problem kasi dito. Do you force the party list? Kung isang seat lang, makilan yung seat niya ay babae. Kahit na number one niya ay lalaki. Kung i-mandatory mo yan, obligado kayong number two ang kukunin. I think masyadong intrusive na yun sa internal processes ng party list group. Ano? Pero kung usapin ng equal opportunity for serving, I think you can mandate na lahat ng lumini. And I support the two bills dito. Pwede nga mandate na 50-50 na nasa listahan ng uh, luminis. Pero kung ano yung actual na ranking ng luminis nila, I think you should leave it to the patrice. Five nominees, law lang naman yun, di ba? Sa nasa law. So, actually, we can change the, the number, di ba? Yes, Sir Honor. At least five lang po nakalagay. At least five. Oh. Okay. So, you can change the number. Change the even number. Oh. At saka, pwede nga ilagay nyo yung record na may mga patrice groups na aware of that at nag minandate nila sa kanyang sariling constitution yung percentage ng kababayahan na nasa no list of nominees. Kaya hindi, hindi tingin ko problem yung ganun eh. Pero maging problem yan kapag nag-ranking na at ang number one ay lalaki just because kailangan may babae, tinanggal mo yung number one. May problem ako na nakikita. No? It's not a question of gender or sex. It's a question na yung number one ranking, nasa na number one rank is lalaki. For the simple reason na lalaki siya, tatanggalin mo siya kasi dapat babae. Hindi problema kung dalawa eh. Malaman sa hindi, the populist can, can make, uh, ano, pero kung isa lang, at karamihan isa lang eh. Isa lang lang lang. Okay, anyway, uh, the, the two lists nga was meant to address that. Uh, Attorney Martin? Uh, Mr. Chair, I second the statement of um, Sir Mon. I just want to respond that, yes, the Constitution did not specifically say she or he. 
And that that's basically the reason why we're here now discussing about this one. Kasi the Constitution did not provide naman na this should only be for the male population. This should only be for the female population. That's why we're here to balance things out and to give opportunity, balance to everyone. So yung danger din po na eventually mas madaming maging babae in public service, that's actually the danger that we are trying to control here na. So, di ba, pag, kapag ka nagkaroon na tayo at this point ng gano'n nga po sa nominees natin, maayos na po nating nabigay yung equal opportunity and everything, there will be the problem of, yun nga, mas madami ng babae na magiging politicians or partless representatives will already be cured or at least prevented, sir. And equal opportunity is granted to everyone. Gusto lang pati i-clear yun na, na the Constitution, yes, did not say na he or she. Pero that's the reason why nga po we're here, na trying to equal things out. No, can we leave this uh, this topic already? Okay na. Uh, uh, Meron sabi ng Gabriela, yes, si Miss Salomon. Yes, yung si Gabriela lang naman po. Um as a sec Chevrolet Women Sectoral Party kami. Wala kami problem doon. Kaya lang nirerespect din po namin yung rights ng ibang party list na mag-exercise ng kanilang um authority uh, decision to decide who will be their nominees. Um Ang ina, siyempre ang advocacy lang namin is definitely dapat within the five nominees, meron talaga at least two, ganun, ng women. Per, per, uh, ano, exactly what the two bills propose. Yes, ba? yes, your okay. honor. Okay, so, uh, Comelec, okay na, we, 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 let's leave this uh, matter. Uh, Pag-aralan natin ito na mabuti. Pero yung ano nito, uh, Uh, at least two nominees, tapos pag-proclaim na lang uh, sa follow the follow the order, uh, follow the ranking, follow the order, as as is uh, observed right now. Okay, uh, Eric, uh, nam friend, you have, you have comments on the party list reform? Tatlo, th uh, three bills. Okay. Please use the mic, please. Essentially, I, I, we support also uh, that uh, list, no? having a two list, but let's not get uh, into the party dynamics. No, uh, Probably we should respect that, no? So it's better that uh, we leave it at that. Now, uh, for for the party list, uh, again, our position is really to to make it equitable and make sure no, that the representation uh, really goes to the essence of representation of uh, uh, the underrepresented. No? So that's clear to us. Uh, we are aware that it's not only uh, political families that take advantage of it, but even business groups, interest groups no, who set up party list. No? Even, well, we have reports, uh, but we still have to get information that even uh, those involved in the black economy are involved no, in setting up uh, a party list. That's why it's very important for Comelec to really be stringent no, on the rules and even the track record. Oh, it's very easy to come out at the last minute. Yeah? with a party list system. So we also are very, we want to emphasize that you have to be very, very careful, you know, with the party list because right now we know based on the acronyms, they ride on a popular acronym of a politician. Then we know that they are, uh, they're an interest group, you no, know, that sells a particular commodity, you no, know, uh, but they push for their business interests. So that's one caution that we want to to probably share no, with the body. Under the present law, kunyari, kunyari hindi wala tayong mapas, walang walang pagbabago. Can, is this uh, is this scenario a possibility? Uh, business group, black market uh, entity forming forming a party list. Ano man track record dinahanap ngayon sa existing ano, years of track record in, the, in advocating uh, the The advocacy? Well, Your Honor, um, 2010 and 2013 po, track record when it comes to, dun po sa sector, for example, you seek to, you claim to represent, let's say, the farmers. Dapat meron ka po track record na ikaw ay talagang pro-farmer, yung kanilang, at yung, yung advocacy ay para sa farmers, etc., etc. Yung grupo, ha? Yung grupo? Yes, seeking, how long? Ilang years? Um, wala po siyang, uh, wala, hindi po namin nailagay na specific na ano, although dapat po is, 
it will convince the commission, ika nga, na talagang ito ay hindi hausyaw lang na ginawa mo lang kahapon. That is the reason po doon sa isang case na kakadesisyo lang ng court because, well, allegedly, they fabricated the evidences, they presented Photoshop. Uh, so, yun po yung issue doon, kaya po sila tinanggal. Uh, going back po, sa track record, yun po yung tinitignan namin. So, kaya nga po mara maraming natanggal noon na even if they are incumbent or sitting party list groups pagdating po ng 2013, nakita na hindi naman pala talaga siya member ng marginalized and underrepresented sector. Pinagtatanggal po namin sila. Kaya po yung atong paglaom case ay napakahaba ng kanyang caption dahil lahat po sila ay nagsitakbuhan sa Supreme Court. Ito nga pag-purpose nito 1904 ni, ni Sen. Ejercito. Pero yun nga, linilimit lang nga niya sa marginalized, pero stricter ang pag-screen kasi. So, you want to to get some of his concepts para gamitin na ng COMELEC in the screening of... Uh, kunya, assuming na walang pagbabagong batas, maybe you can get some of the concepts in 1904. Yes, Sir Honor, uh, that, that, that it's a very good idea, Your Honor, but however, we have to abide pa rin po doon sa atong paglaom na medyo nag-relax siya, hindi lang konti, but todo. Kasi papakita po rito, yung sa previous rules po kasi namin, uh, particularly yung recent one po, 9366, binis po namin sa bagong bayani. Ang sinabi po kasi sa bagong bayani ni Justice Panganiban is that they should belong. Eh dito po hindi Advocate lang po pwede na so mas, ma mas maluwag na po ika nga. So yun pong concern ni Mr. Alvia kanina na pwedeng itong mga grupo na to na hindi naman pala talaga uh, members but they claim that they are advocates etc. Kukuha lang po sila ng isang advocate para maging nominee. Pasok na po tayo doon. If ever, if ever may ma-accredit, is there, is there a proceeding to annul? to contest the accreditation of a party list. Well, Your Honor, under the current rules po ng COMELEC, uh, meron pong, uh, meron naman pong petition na to, to cancel. And who can file it? Anybody po, any anybody, interested party. In anybody. fact po, just like in every petition, anybody, any interested party can file an opposition. Ang masama nga lang po, kukunti lang naman po, or even wala ang nagpa-file ng opposition. Tsaka lang po sila kumikibo kapag na-accredit. Ah, uh, limited... Hindi, pag na-credit na, pwede pa? Hindi, na, ang, ang party list, pwede pa ma-anal yung accreditation niya? Pwede po. Kasi ang, sa party list, all, the, all existing party list must be interested in, the, in every applicant, di ba? Dapat, gano'n. So, at least, yung, yung vigilance, yung level of vigilance nandun, so, supposed to be, ha? I think, Your Honor, that's the reason why marami pong party list na kasama sa casualty ka nga noong 20, for purposes of 2013 elections dahil nakalagay po sa, sa party list law that the commission can cancel even moto proprio yung mga petitions ng party list kapag hindi po nila na-meet yung mga requirements. So, ang ginawa po namin dyan under 9366, Community Resolution 9366, pinagsamit po namin sila ulit ang mga, mga documents nila, track record, etc. So, nung nakita po namin na medyo may konting uh, conflict or medyo hindi makatotohanan yung kanilang mga pinagsasubmit, yun po yung reason kasi kasama po yun sa powers namin under 7941 that we can cancel also their petition. At siya, yeah, Engineer Ben Asar muna. Engineer Ben Asar, then Attorney Monsod. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Regarding the accreditation of a political party list, of a party list, uh, I believe uh, there is already a strong mechanism on how uh, how the Comelec uh, requires these uh, organizations to be accredited. You have just said that uh, there are requirements. You let the 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 applicant to give. To, all the, to give all the requirements as needed. Now, sinasabi ko na meron silang strong mechanism, ang kulang lang ay yung sa COMELEC to validate, to validate yung sinasubmit na requirements. For example, you are requiring, the law requires na itong uh, applicant na ito ay magsasubmit ng list of leaders nationwide. Remember that the party list representation should be nationwide, hindi lang region or isang lugar lang. So, kung ang may komalek ang may may personnel to validate or on record 
hindi natin alam kung paano niya gagawin. Pero uh, I'm saying na merong, uh, merong, merong uh, wide discretion ng COMELEC na i-validate, meron silang power para ma-validate ito. One way, one way to ma-disqualify ma ma muna kagad, you will be able to trim down the nuisance uh, applicants Kasi ang dami, ang dami talaga nagpapalusot tala, nagpapalusot. Cor correction uh, ano uh, Omar ah, uh, uh, pwedeng ang regional eh uh, sa party list. Ang ang election, yes, yes. ang election nila is nationwide pero regional sila. Pero I think Comelec does it pero you know, pag nalusutan kayo, you still have the power to reverse your accreditation. Y y that's the point ah. Huh? That's your that's your uh, director Elnas please. Uh, actually we have the mechanism on that no to check the veracity. Uh, as far as the qualification and the organizational structure for each and every uh, applicant for accreditation. Uh, usually, uh, pinapadalayan to, through our regional directors and provincial election supervisors and down to the election officers to conduct investigation and to ask questions about uh, investi conduct investigation as to the existence of these organizations down to municipal or city level, Your Honor. And they submit it to the commission, and the commission through the law department will uh, evaluate and assess, then come up with the decision, Your Honor. But Komilik is uh, telling this committee that as far as the length, the minimum period for the track record for the advocacy, wala, sa, wala on paper yan, ha? Tama po ba yun? Kasi medyo, wala baka, pong... baka, baka improvement yun kung lagyan natin. Pwede po siguro, Your Honor. Kaya baka, na, baka nga improve. Pag-isipan nyo, pasa nyo sa ENBA, baka improvement kung lagyan nyo ng na figure or whatever. I, I don't know. I, I, bigla ko lang na naisip na, na baka improvement yun. Uh, kasi, Your Honor, um, I was a former staff ng commissioner. So, hmm. we are assigned to evaluate po yung mga petitions na binibigay. Wala po kasi siyang definite na, let's say, a year before registration. Even even the um, registration with the SEC, Your Honor, hindi po kasama yun doon sa law. Eh. It's just the COMELEC po ang naglagay, nag-include sa... Pero required na siya ngayon. Opo. Uh. So, nilagay po namin siya 9366 that aside from the... Doc, kasi nakalagay po doon yung ating catch-all provision, ika nga, and such other documents which a commission may require. Mm -hmm. So, linagay na po namin doon yung iyong track okay. record, ang iyong SEC registration, laws and bylaws, etc., etc. po. And because of those um, requirements po, marami po kami nakita na medyo kulang, hindi mo na meet, so therefore, hindi ka karapat dapat ma-accredit or yung iyong accreditation ay dapat ma-cancel. So, ganun po yun nung nangyari noong 2013, Your Honor. Ang nakuha ko sa observation ni Mr. Alvia ng Namfrel, eh, kinakatakutan nila yung instant. Uh, so, pero kung, kung wala nga, kung you, you, you supply the details, di ba? Nag-supply kayo ng details, but you didn't, Maybe you lack a detail, a certain detail, the number of years, the minimum number of years that you have been engaged in the advocacy, precisely to address this instant uh, party list, uh, possibility of an instant party list. Ano, Director Elnas? Uh, mayroon dito, ano, Your Honor, no? uh, ito yung mga contents ng petition for accreditation ng, ng isang party list, one of which is the period of existence of the petitioner, which shall be at least one year. At the time of the petition, if so, you, you, you're looking for one year. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. uh, sige, at Mr. Albi, Mr. Albi, Albi, just Albi, just to clarify also, uh, I'd like to ask, Comlec, is it also imposed on the nominees? Because you may have a legitimate party list group, but the nomin, the, but they would choose a nominee because he or she is popular or who would boost probably the chances of winning. Is it imposed also on the nominees? Step by step yun, di ba? Accredit the group as a party list. And then, another resolution yata yung nominees. Nabanggit ni Atty. Rodriguez kanina, ibang resolution yun sa nominees. Ah, sige, habang inaaral muna ng Komile, kung masagot lang ngayon. And then, sige, Atty. Monsod, what, what's your point, sir? Ito lang pong uh, sa akin. Tama, unang-una, ang party list pwedeng regional, pwedeng nationwide. Kami po, nationwide kami. Maybe isang dapat tignan natin, kung regional, baka pwede nating limit. Anong region, ilan region, anong region ka? 
Dahil pwede halimbawa malaking region, Bicol, for instance, laking region dyan, eh kung tatlong regional ang nando doon, eh di tatlo sila, siguro, baka we can have, a, hello, that uh, limits regional representation to one per region. So that's regional. Kami, nationwide kami, we registered as a nationwide political party, marginalized political party. Yun po. Pangalawa po, yung COMELEC, I think, uh, the power of COMELEC should be looked into by this committee. Alam nyo, maraming salita, maraming usap-usapan na bibili yung registration sa COAT. Kasi masyadong maluwag or masyadong malawak ang kanilang discretion. Pwede nagtataka nga tayo, ba't yung pumasok, ba't yung hindi pumasok, yung mga ganyan. Dahil daw, which may be wrong, hindi tama. One year, masyado maikli. Po. De, one year track record. Uh, isa sa mga... Masyado pong maikli yun sa tingin ninyo? Ba baka nga po. Kasi nga may yung on the matter of instant uh, party lists. Pero tignan natin yung track record nga. Uh -huh. One year, two years. Pero tignan natin. Or yung uri ng kanilang... Uh, Subjective uh, na masyado. Tra no? Track record. Pero sa ngayon po, uh, masyadong unfair sa Comelec. Pero they are... They are uh, branded. Parang paling doon, pwedeng may kilala ka dito, may makakapasok ka. Which, to my mind, is unfair. Pero lumabas ka, yun ang usap-usapan. Sige. Finally, ah. eh kami namang mga matagal nang sumasali dyan, eh kakabakaba pa rin kami. Pwede nila kaming idilis. Eh. If they decide, Even if you want seats. Lahat ng eleksyon, lahat ng eleksyon, kasali kami na sa party list. And number one kami, pero next next election, kakabaka-baka. Hindi mo alam kung ididilis ka. Dahil, pwede nilang gawin yun. And I think, there were a few na nadilis na na, na, na halal na. Sir, let's look at the law. Ano yung, okay, point out to us, ano yung ginagamit ilang grounds para i-review natin yung, yung source of power nila? Yung kanilang power po, yung sa kaya doon, which one, ito. anong ginagamit ba? Oh. Ano yung kinakatakutan ninyo na power nila para ma-review ma ma natin? Yung mga unwritten power nila, yun ang coach. Pero, ato naman sa case, if you review the law at ma-refresh ka, makita mo, oh, uh, communicate with us para ma-review ma din namin. Uh, Again, ngayon, finally po, siguro, matatapos uh, na tayo. Kami, meron na kami experience, uh, 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 inalis namin ang member namin. So, if there was a discussion when I came in about that, we did so. We have, we have expelled. Ano lang namin, sir, kung sa mga ganyan, in case of dispute, a question niya, dapat from your papers, sa registration papers, klaro kung sino yung, sino yung nag-decide. Kasi i-approve na ng comment. Tama po. Oh, ganun na Tama po. po. Dahil sa yung yun, isyong yun, na-resolve, sa sana sasabihin ko, na-resolve, finally, Dali using our bylaws. bylaws. Ah, tama po yun. Yun ang, yun ang klaro sa amin. very good. Opo. Thank you. Ah, uh, Attorney uh, Rodrigo, uh, Director Arla, sige please. Uh, yung, yung sinasabi ni Sir na ano, kinakabahan sila right, right after elections, no? paparating yung elections, kinakabahan because they will be submitting for ano, their uh, manifestation of intent to participate in the elections. Siguro hindi naman siguro ganun ano Sir, kasi sa ano, sa batas, Especially number seven and number eight. Number seven says that uh, it it has ceased to exist for at least one year. That's one. Then uh, number eight, it fails to participate in the two preceding elections or fails to obtain at least two percentum of the votes cast votes cast under the party list system. So, pag wala ka namang problema dyan, you don't have to worry. Nakaupo yeah, Pero anong case last time, eh, nakaupo na hindi nyo, na hindi pinainalaw mag-participate? Um, baka dito ka magpa-fall sa untruthful ano, uh, statements and the petition. And yung subsequently grounds. discovered yeah. na lang. Ano? Yes, Your Honor. Eh, can you give us the assurance na hindi daw for sale yung accreditation? Kasi na-raise na na eh, na who accredits and bank? Um, and, uh, so, uh, uh, collegial naman po pala eh. Uh, And bank, pero do, does the end bank rely on certifications from some other level, some other people? Baka ganun, baka ganun na nangyayari. That's the, maybe that, that, that's the weakness in the process na they rely too much on some certification from 
some other uh, committee or group and then or person? Uh, usually, Your Honor, that's one of the you know, uh, documents that the Commission will look into, you know, like certifications or reports or uh, the investigations conducted by our field personnel, Your Honor. That's only one. So another documents, another ano, evidences that will be looked upon by the NBank. No? Isa lang yun sa ano, Your Honor, uh, that will be taken into consideration before coming up with the resolution, Your Honor. Anyway, basta na malaman ng NBank that some certification was uh, issued for a fee or for a price, eh, they will have to discipline their people. Uh, so anyway, uh, and Attorney Rodriguez? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Gusto ko lang po i-clarify no? yung sinabi po ni Sir Kanina that unwritten rule. Actually po, lahat naman po ng ginawa namin sa 9366 ay based sa Republic Act 7941. Number one po, yung po sinabi ni Mr. Alvia kanina, gano'n ba katagal dapat bago ka pwede maging nominee? Nakalagay po sa Section 9 ng Republic Act 7941 that he must be a member for at least 90, 90 days. Gano'n lang po kaiksi. So kami po, wala po kami magagawa. All that the person will do is preset na siya ay member nitong grupo na to. And then number two po, yung pong sinasabi kanina ni Attorney Monson na unwritten rule or power, yung pong nakalagay sa aming resolution 9366, lahat po yan ay base sa 7941 at saka sa mga decisions po ng Supreme Court. Wherein sa section 6 po na 90, ng 7941 nakalagay po rito, refusal and or cancellation of registration. So ibig po sabihin, even if registered ka na, if you violated any kung an, dito sa mga nakalagay po rito sa batas, pwede po namin i-cancel. Hindi naman po siguro vested right na pag na-register ka ay hindi na pwedeng i-cancel ang iyong registration. It must, it, it must be a radical change. For example, all of a sudden, nag-advocate na kayo ng violence. Yun, mga ganun. Siguro ganun. Yeah, yes, Your diba? Honor. Like for instance, uh, existing ka na na party list, then ultimately, uh, may nagpa-file na may nagka-question na sa... Uh, By receiving foreign aid or donations, that's one ground or in which that's a blunder on the part of the ano by accepting prohibited. At in at any rate, your honor, there will be due process, no hearing, presentation of documents and evidences and etc. Your honor, before one will be ano. Before we leave the topic, ano ACTCIS, may attorney Alcantara, maybe we can hear from you and then ayusin na natin ito. Mukang okay naman, we we can proceed. Uh, yes, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, we would like to extend our gratitude for uh, inviting us to this uh, public hearing, and uh, we would like to manifest our full support to, elect to electoral reform, particularly in strengthening the party list system. Um, I would have to agree with the, the, the observations of Attorney Monsod. Uh, with respect to the first bill that was mentioned earlier, that uh, with the, cal the additional qualifications that limit uh, the nominees for party list uh, representatives, um, I think it would be an undue limitation if we would just like to go into the wisdom of the additional qualifications so as not to, to disqualify other qualified individuals who are legitimately legitimately supporting the advocacies of the, the party list. And uh, with respect to the women's groups, Your Honor, uh, I would also agree with the, with the suggestion from uh, Our colleagues, that uh, we can we can put mandatory uh, women women represent nominees in our uh, in our lists. However, we should not. Uh, I, I I agree that we we should not uh, uh, put additional restrictions on the ranking. Uh, I think that that will uh, serve enough the the intention of uh, women's women's uh, representation in Congress, Your Honor. And thank you, Your Honor. Nelcantar, Miss Sanchez, before we leave, the, if 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 you have some inputs, no. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, I would agree that uh, there there is really a need to put the women nominees in the list. But, but however, I have I we have certain reservations as to uh, list wherein there are the women nomin to two lists, basically because of the of the principle of the equal, equal protection clause of the law. But maybe probably, Mr. Chair, your suggestion for that zipper list. Would be a more practical one. That's in the two bills. Ah, okay. So, kaya to. There, we, 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 for the past two hours, we discussed three bills, no. Yung 1904, medyo pag-aralan ko mo na ulit yon. Yun yung sa underrepresented and marginalized because of the constitutional angle. Pero itong mandating 40 percent 
uh, women nominees. Uh, I think sa pwede na itong ATWG na po natin ito. Sayang eh, kasi sayang we're opening already the party list. Ano, sana comprehensive uh, reform na on the party list. Pero baka mas, mahi, mas ma mahirap tagalan. So step by step na lang muna tayo, incremental. But these two bills are just on the nominees. Yun lang po, doon lang po muna. O sige, so we will, we will, uh, we are ready I think to subject the two bills to a technical working group to finalize the wording and then we will uh, report this out to the plenary. Pero let's continue to, ano, to review the party list system at gawa tayo ng comprehensive omnibus, ano na, omnibus bill uh, reforming it. Pero mag-policy decision din tayo whether we will limit it to the underrepresented and marginalized. Then necessarily, of course, the Supreme Court will follow, will will modify its interpretation if it should survive a, an attack on its constitutionality. Ganun ang, uh, ready lang tayo sa mag-policy decision tayo ron. Pero siguro ang, uh, ang natin sa resolve natin today is uh, yung uh, women uh, nomination. So for lack of time, itong political party development bills natin, Mon, we'll hear it again. But uh, I'm telling you, ang gut feeling ko, this state subsidy fund is going to be controversial. I mean, uh, uh, with the people, uh, I don't know. Um, <laughs> well, and then itong, itong civil society organization, bills, maganda naman ito. I think uh, bottom-up planning, bottom-up planning lang naman ito. Uh, wala naman siguro tayong, uh, bon, wala naman tayong ano rito, uh, Ms. Mar Attorney Martin, LP, wala naman kasi. Yung bottom-up, yung concept of the bottom-up planning, local development councils, NGO kasi ngayon ang, ang parang nung, ang ngayon data uh, ngayon yata ang charge is parang kung may company union eh uh, administration NGO or yung administration ni mayor NGO niya so ini-improve lang yung system uh, attorney Vega uh, ang comment lang po namin doon is yung scope and limitation din lang po ng participation ng mga NGOs or CSOs because sa isang bill hindi po siya defined kung sino magpa-participate lang or accredited at sa isa rin, parang hindi po delimited masyado kung sino magpa-participate. Can a CSO from Manila participate in the planning in the regions? Or is it national or regional? So, yun lang po yung medyo hindi uh, clear doon sa batas. Actually, second hearing na ito eh, on these bills, but uh, I don't know if the League of Provinces, if you have, uh, and the other leagues po sana, if you, especially siguro dito sa, sa CSO bills. No? Uh, but, uh, Ms. Sanchez? Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, medyo, we have no basic objections to the bills except that on the provisions dun sa accreditation po. Kasi medyo malabo po yung bills eh, kasi there, there's an option either they file with the Sanggunian Panlalawigan or the Secretariat of the PD of the Local Development Council. So maybe that's one we should we should decide which is which. Can you can you can you suggest? So, anong maganda? So, under the local government code po and practice, nasa ano naman po, nasa sangguni ang panlalawigan fina-file. So, parang... Parang in-bank ano din yun, in-bank decision opo. din nila. In, -bank. in the form of a RESO resolution, yes, they will approve per per application? Per, per application yeah, so. po. Ma'am, kasi... if you could tell us, the, if you could write to the committee, tell us the current practice. Then, Sige po. Eh, ano, ano. And then we will submit our formal position paper po. And especially for the accreditation process, I mean the requirements po, yun yung medyo kailangan rin nating tingnang mabuti. Po, paki, paki tulungan kami paghimay. And can you also, ano, you're the only league represented here. How about the other leagues? Can you, can we use your league to tell them about the, ano, this? Uh, kayo, sige po. Wala rito yung iba. <laughs> Huh? Uh, with our, ano, I'll just get in touch with my other colleagues from the other leagues. And Kasi apik apik na din sila, di ba? Yes, May po. yung level nila na development council yes, nila po. o level nila. Sige po, I'll also further please, uh, copy. So please, uh, maraming salamat Sige po sa League of Provinces. Kayo na po yung aming gagamiting agent dyan. Uh, Attorney Martin of LP. Yes, our comment line. Um, I think this one, we very much agree with the people in participation in governance, this one point, developmental um, uh, bills natin, I think this is actually familiar to what's being pra what is being practiced right now in the DILG. Yung formerly called uh, bottom-up budgeting na ngayon, parang grassroots, parang what they do is, um, yung projects po originates from the civil society groups and from the NGOs. Ganun. So I think um, we, we strongly um, support for these bills. If, basta maayos lang po natin mabuti. Yeah, pa siya. Do you have a position paper, LP? 
Ah, uh, kasi kung may meron daw mga inadequacies pointed out. So paki-aral if you agree then how do we kung may mga deficiencies ano natin? Okay, may gaps, kung may gaps in the bills. Okay, sir. Sige. Sige, sir. Uh, Mr. Albia? Yes. Um we share also that concern right now. Yes, uh CSOs are allowed and NGOs and people's organizations are allowed to participate but again, no, the discretion remains with the Sangguniyan their instances because they're invoking again no, i think this is the crux of it 92 memorandum circular 9246 of the dilg and they give the discretion no, to do sangunian so there are times that there are certain groups who are not organized who would want to participate but they're east out they're not because they're not accredited they cannot comply no? so probably we should also reconsider non-organized groups no to be uh, considered uh, especially the POs, no? because they they're the ones uh, who are concerned. They they're the ones who are at not stake. formally registered. Yung mga, yes. yung mga hindi, yes. Kasi humihingi pa ng mga yung mga hindi ink. Yes. Yung mga ganon. Yes, for foundations. Uh, ano maraming grupo ng ganon eh. Miss Sanchez, so, uh, currently allowed by yung mga hindi incorporated entities. Oh, there are several levels naman po of accreditation. Eh. They don't have to be ink. Eh. Mm. They can all mm. they can be registered mm. with the CDA. Yeah. Uh, there, there are other bodies naman po which provide the accreditation. But how formal How formal should they be? Kasi ang co-op is formal naman talaga rin niya. Parang ang sec lang nila is the CDA. Eh. Yung isa, ink. Ano, how, yung mga parang ang, yung, ang word na ginamit ni Eric is uh, unorganized pero baka informal. Mga informal. POs ang ginamit yung example. Are they allowed? POs? Uh, POs are allowed po. Pero there, but there how must you know that it's a PO? How will there's you know? a certain level of organization po. That's why medyo ano rin tayo sa accreditation uh, here. There, what, they, there what, should be really a, what an makes accreditation a PO process. A PO? What, what makes a group of people a PO? How will we know? Uh, paano kayo, because, Eric? Uh, what's your, what's your idea? Forcing, uh, in order for them to be dealt with a local LGU, they're being forced to uh, join a network. No? Eh, kung minsan, dahil they want to join, pero hindi naman sila komportable doon sa network na yun, sasali na lang sila. Yung mga iba, huwag na lang. Yung network na yun, yun yung incorporated, yung mga ganun. Mm -hmm. Oo. Oh, so, ganun yun yung recognized. Kasi ano, nakuha ko rin yung point of view nila eh. You're a, you're, you're, you're a group. You, 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 you PO ka, pero how will you know na PO sila? Hmm. Oh, well, eh, 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 uh, Mon? <coughs> Meron kaming question dito sa accreditation as both as a concept and as a policy. Unang-una, ang usual na nangyari dito, na-credit lang ng mga local governments, yung kanila. Yan ang problem actually dito. The problem is not yung nag-accredit ka ng hindi dapat i-accredit. Ang principal sa institution in relation to participation of NGOs na kinikilala as a right sa constitution, ay yung kung sino ang nararapat at may interest kaugnay ng issue o ng usapin na pinag-uusapan, may karapatan na mag-ano mag sa gobyerno humarap. Meaning, the idea is the other way. You do not restrict. In fact, you open. Ako tingin ko, ang single restriction dito, hindi this applies to non-organized uh, groups uh, included, ano? kapag ikaw ay constituency in a certain jurisdiction, Every individual citizen, kahit hindi siya organized, pero let's say, nakatira siya sa isang barangay, may say siya sa takbo ng barangay na yan. Whether organization siya or individual, the same kung nang pag-usapan natin yung munisipyo or probinsya. Kung gagawin sa ganung prinsipyo, yung butong sub-approach, nagre-require lamang na you get organized para mas marami kang nire-represent kapag nagsalita ka. But it should not restrict Yung pagsalita na yan. Ang problem sa accreditation ngayon, sa karamihan na alam namin na gumagawa ng ganyan, restrictive. Kailangan may okay ka. Pag walang okay yung mayor, walang okay yung sangunyan, hindi ka pwede sumama. That is against the constitutional provision ng allowing or kilalanin yung role ng NGO sa nation building. Mon, mon, uh, kung pwede mo kaming gawa ng position paper, pero magtanong ko sa yung bills, di ba? Walang individuals? Di ba? In terms ng NGO kasi. Pero mas malawak yung karapatan na sinasabi ko. Oo nga, oo nga. Ayun yung sinatin. Mag number two concept mo, kung inclusive masyado, di ba may hangganan yung membership? That is a limit to to a membership. Hindi niya pwedeng gawing open-ended na sobrang laki na. Hindi, walang problema doon. Pero ang question dyan, 
kung ano yung hangganan na yan ay dapat in accordance with the principle ng participation in not restricting participation. May practical question lang. Halimbawa, alam nga naman lahat ng citizens sa isang probinsya mag-meet. Ano? Pero kung may gusto sumama, you could not restrict. Kahit ako individual, ha? gusto ko sumama sa diskusyon na yan. Ang gagawin ng dapat ng provincial government is to provide a venue. Hindi naman necessarily face-to-face. Eh. Halimbawa, may internet page na pwede maglagay ng opinion bawat uh, taga-probinsya. Ako sa tingin ko, ang restriction lang doon ay kung ikaw ay resident ng ganung jurisdiction. Kasi kung bawat taga-Manila magkikialam sa isang town doon sa probinsya, eh, malayo, ang, malayo sa kanya yung usapin na yan. Kung ganun lang ang restriction sa tingin ko, pwede na. The rest is ministerial. Eh. You, 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 meaning, ang gusto makialam once na maluwanag tigaroon siya, is to register. But you, you, you like the bills? We, we should have uh, laws like this. Kailangan yung ganong bills to make it orderly. Ano? So, Pero yun na nga yung caution ko. Kailangan talagang i-review yung... Uh, oh, can we, ask, can we ask for IPERS yes. uh, position paper? How to ano? Uh, sige, sige. Uh, kung mali ang focus, i-refocus natin. O kung may, kung may butas, i- oh, ano naman ang part ng mandate namin yun? Okay, okay. sige. Okay. So, Mama, okay. Ah, sige, Mr. Bueno, last word, and then yes. we have to, we have Thank to you, spend. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, uh, by experience, as a former member of the provincial board, uh, yung accreditation ng mga people's organization, usually may mga environmental uh, concerns, mga yan, karamihan, sa galing sa mga bundok-bundok, ano, P.O., P.O., P.O. Pero actually, in uh, by experience, hindi natin sila hindi namin sila nire-register na no may level lang may may level yan eh may qualification din but then as to yung uh, yung talagang uh, inaccredit ay yung mga legally accredited organizations talagang meron siyang uh, personality to 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 show yun yun hindi basta-basta association ka na lang tricycle drivers association hindi ka na-register uh, na accredit actually na Actually, wala naman yatang nag-object sa ano, no? Yung tanong panawagan lang, more, gawing more inclusive, yun lang. Pero so, okay, okay, with that, because, anyway, second time na ito hinir, I think it's ripe for for it to be, ano na, to be subjected to a technical working group. But after, after we receive, we'll give you time to submit your position papers para makita po natin how we can improve the pending bills and upuan na po natin. So, anyway, as pointed out by Attorney Martin, may bottom-up budgeting na na ginagawa. So, this is bottom-up planning, actually. Oh. Okay, so, can we invite all of the organizations here present, pati party list, and of course, the leagues uh, to participate in uh, in finalizing these two, two bills, uh, position papers po muna, and then we'll call for a technical working group after receiving all of the position papers. Okay, so we will suspend mo na. We will uh, next time na mag third hearing na tayo sa ano, a second hearing pa rin on the political party development bills and other related bills. So thank you very much for your presence and for your inputs. Our hearing is hereby suspended. <clears throat>